Alright, for those of you interested, that is the new hit single by Carmen, titled Blight. On her new album, Donald Trump, Cash Me Outside. Timely title indeed. Ha! My name's Sonia Hernandez, I am a social justice and human rights graduate student, and today I will be talking about the Border Studies block course that I just completed with some of my beloved peers. Now, I had this really awesome idea at the beginning of the course. I was going to podcast my way through Landscapes of Neoliberalism, which is actually the name of the class. Did that happen? Heck no, it did not. I was immediately struck by everything I was learning and everyone we were meeting with. It was just a really emotional experience and I really couldn't handle both processing my feelings and recording a podcast. But on one morning at the beginning of the course, I attempted to record myself, and of course, my software crashed. I lost the audio and I did not bother re-recording it because I was a bit discouraged, and the course continued without me podcasting any more of it. But I still have the script for that podcast that crashed, and I'm going to share it with you right now. So last night, I intended on working on this episode of the podcast, but I ended up having a really good heart-to-heart with one of the undergrads. I felt like that obviously took priority over anything else. It really made me reflect, though, on the power of listening. I think that I definitely am someone who tends to talk too much and sometimes not listen enough. As an organizer, listening is definitely a skill that needs to be developed, or you risk negative consequences shining through in your organizing work. I'm working on this skill, and there's always room for improvement. End quote. Now, what was interesting about the fact that I just recorded myself saying we need to listen to people is that the very next day, we went to Agua Prieta, Sonora, and we met with an older man named Randall, who worked for an organization called Frontera de Cristo, and he was our guide in Agua Prieta, And one of the first things Randall talked to us about was the importance of listening. I was absolutely blown away. Now, he was explaining to us the evolution of being a paternalistic organization to being fully incorporated into the community, with the community, for the community, all that good good. But I couldn't help but think that I was a little psychic. Or maybe Randall and I were cosmically connected. Was it a sign? I don't know. Maybe. Just maybe. We, as organizers, activists, students, or just plain human beings, really need to listen. While I was reading Todd Miller's book, Border Patrol Nation, In chapter 5, titled Unfinished Business in Indian Country, I was incredibly shocked by the ways in which the border and border patrol affected the native people of the Tohono O'odham Nation. The U.S.-Mexico border actually goes straight through their land. Their nation is literally divided by the very colonized geography we know of as the U.S.-Mexico border, which is on one hand fascinating, But through a decolonized lens, it's incredibly horrifying. Lucky for us, Todd Miller has good relationships with Tohono O'odham organizers and community members, and he was able to arrange a day for us on the Tohono O'odham Reservation, which is the second largest reservation in the country. One of the groups we met with was a group of students at the local high school in a class based in Tohono O'odham language and culture. Here we met a very inspiring teacher named Annie. Now, my audio isn't very good here, but she's just finished explaining to us a summarized version of her class, which is to teach the native language and the importance of their culture and also some cultural social movements. Our students, I know they're they're, um, (coughs) probably hesitant, scared, nervous, but I also do trust that you guys can answer because you live here. You guys don't live here. You guys live here, so... They need to know how you guys feel 
as young people you have questions I was inspired by what Annie said. We, Prescott College students, do not live on the Tahana Autumn Nation, but they do. We were there to respectfully listen to what they had to say. So I asked how the students felt about the border being there on their land and how they felt about Border Patrol. Um, so, I mean, honestly, I don't really feel any way towards Border Patrol. I mean, I've never been harassed or treated any differently. I'm one of the closest ones to the border, but I've never really had any problems with them. Um, me too. I personally don't have nothing against border patrol. I'm the second closest. In case you couldn't hear that, those two high school boys agreed that they were pretty indifferent towards border patrol, and they even lived right on the border. That seemed to be a common theme on that side of the room, until we got to the two girls who were sitting closer to my side of the room. Both of their families had different experiences with Border Patrol agents. Um, I don't like the Border Patrol. They, they, um, they, um, I know my dad when I was two. I was, he was only like 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. so I had a hard time with that still. And I, I just really don't like them, but I can't judge all of them because. They're not all the same, my grandma tells me. This young girl just broke down crying and continued to tell us that a Border Patrol agent ran over her father and killed him when she was only two years old. He was only 17 or 18, she says. She later explains that the man who killed him was never charged for anything. He was only restationed. I really don't, but then I do have a problem with them because... Yeah. Let's say back in 2014, okay. they followed my uncle all the way from this side of the nation to down this way. And they said that he had some stuff, so they followed him all the way to my village, Nowak. And they, what, harassed him? So my, he called my dad and my other uncle, and I guess. They could have got killed, all of them. Because they had him at, um, they had him at gunpoint. And I know it would have been really hard for my family because we're a big family, supposedly, in the nation. Because what we do. But I just, I guess I don't like Border Patrol. Once they see us or see my dad sometimes, they treat him, sorry for the language, but they treat him like shit. <laughs> These two young girls were not the only ones we heard from that day to speak of the blatant abuse and harassment by Border Patrol on the Tohono Autumn people. I unfortunately wasn't able to capture any audio, but we did speak to a cattle rancher who had lived his whole life on the reservation. He had many, many, many stories of being harassed, held at gunpoint, pepper sprayed, and even beaten over the head with a baton. Listening and truly hearing what people have to say is imperative to the work that we do as organizers in social justice and human rights. We did receive presentations from both ICE and Border Patrol agents, and they gave us the same story time and time again. They're here to protect us from the drug smugglers, the terrorists, the unpredictable criminals with DUIs, the rock throwers, the people too impatient to legally cross the border. You know, the bad hombres. This is the narrative you hear from our homeland security and all law enforcement to keep us safe from the scary people of southern countries. It is very clear that to many Border Patrol agents, Tohono Autumn people are just another brown face for them to question, and they are treated as such. Could this possibly be another way that our country is able to maintain state-sanctioned violence and killing off, causing trauma, and keeping the native people of this land oppressed? We can't just listen to the dominant narrative that is constantly fed to us by those in power. 
we cannot simply see them as the experts on these issues and accept their narrative as common sense. We need to listen to those who are directly affected by the issues. In this case, we need to listen to the people living on the border. That is the narrative we need to hear. Those who are directly affected by these issues are the true experts. It's fun.